here. What up? It's your boys. It's good. What up, boy? It's been a minute. Chilling. I know. I uh you had a busy week. There have been like things that have come up, and I was like, oh, like I Tamarish comes send for this, and then like I'm like, damn, this man's mad far away. I'm trying to get a squad together. Jacob from the Philippines is coming. So I'm trying to get a squad when? together to go to House ES uh beginning of April. Okay. Um there might be there might like be something that could March, be done. Beginning. Yeah, there might be something that could, could be, be fun. Yeah. yeah. Might be planning a trip for exactly that time. But I might not be. Fox. So I don't know. It'd be like that. But that would be fun. Um House yeah. of Yes is the one where like people wear tons of costumes, right? Like it's in Brooklyn. I actually haven't been, but I heard it's just like a lot, like wild, and it's supposed to be a lot of fun. So I don't know. I just I, I thought that'd be a, a good time and like I don't know a proper send nice. in New York. So, yeah. You've been chilling with everyone though, Henry. Um, yeah, Tomas. Yeah, we, Tomas. I need to chill with, but Henry, that place we went to is mad fun. You would have yeah, you would have fought with it. Yeah. The one that he kept posting stories from. Oh, you don't have Instagram anymore. He kept posting stories from behind, like the DJ booth. I don't know. That's like half of Henry's life. Mm -hmm. Facts. <laughs> this kid, I don't um, know what he does. Literally. Um, what about I you? Was... What's good with you? How's uh, the Florida life? Man's about to <laughs> claim residency in Florida. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I just, you know, with this this new job, I was doing like income sort of like salary calculate, like tax calculators, like page, I guess paycheck calculations. And it's like it 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 adds up the difference it's tangible it's it's extremely it's, it's like a it's like a different salary yeah bro yeah. if it's like if you make a dollar and you're paying 10 percent less like whatever yeah. it's like regardless of income mm -hmm. it's like yeah it makes that's it's sense. like you're already there you've been there for what three it's four like six percent it's like six percent it's yeah and then city tax too yeah um yeah and i'm i i don't think i can say anything retro actively though because i haven't been paying like bills on paper while i've been here i don't know how that works i'll have to check it out um but yeah i mean i'm thinking about it like i was like looking at a, like apartments on street easy and rents have also gone up in new york bro, like yeah it's 30 percent, bro bro like and like yeah. i don't know man like you can get way more space in miami for the same price point but the thing is like new york i think the apartments have more character like Miami apartments are pretty sure. cookie cutter. What, what you get yeah, is like the lifestyle. Nice. You get the lifestyle. You get the view. If you have a nice, you like, get a fucking you... balcony too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's huge. Every building should just guaranteed like have balconies. Like I, I, I know nothing about like structural engineering, architecture, but like balconies. I don't care if you live in like Antarctica or just mm -hmm. like elite. Though. Yeah, I wonder why New York doesn't have as many balconies. Like I, I wonder if there's Probably an just actual the reason. Top. Yeah. Might be just be like architectural convention, or if there was an actual like structural reason, but I can't sure. think of why that would be the case. Like they just didn't want people jumping. I don't know. Near near one of my boys' places, and kind of near where you live, like there's uh, like these new buildings going up that literally just look like they took a building out of Miami, like big bleach white building, massive yeah. like uh, balconies popping up all over the city. Like and I it, like like I said, like people. People about the balcony. Yeah, our balcony in Brickle was just I mean, it was it was that elite. was like a religion. It was religion. Because you just like like the amount of time was on there. We probably spent like a disproportion like disproportionate amount of time per square foot on that like mm -hmm. balcony. Yeah. Also being directly facing east, so you get the sunrise, there's no buildings in the view. Like that's actually sure so good for your health to start your day with like direct sunlight and i, yeah. I mean like i would go out there every morning i don't really remember i know you I did know. sometimes but um or often like we all did often just take my coffee out there chill like take a call like a zoom Throw call a yeah <laughs> yeah if henry could hit that uh that post he definitely could have hit he definitely would have made it to the i think he could have cleared yeah he could have cleared the the horizontal i don't know if he would have had the accuracy to like yeah. actually hit the thing, Bro, but I yeah. think he could have he could have cleared it. I was shocked because I, I, I thought he was going to actually do it. After I know, living, I kind of regret that he didn't. Yeah, but after like, we wouldn't even fuck if it. No, after living in Miami for yeah. a year, that you wouldn't have got caught. Honestly, like, bro, so much crazy shit happens here. 
What are they really even going to say? It's like a tiny little exp- like, psh, and that's it. Bro, so the building that I'm in, my girlfriend's apartment, um, kind of like ours uh, in Brickell in the sense that they have like a roof that's, sorry, they have a pool that's like kind of a mezzanine that's like on the 12th floor or something like that. And pretty often actually, but it's it's been closed and they're doing like re- construction renovation because they have like the gym, everything on that floor, kind of like Brickle building. And uh, pretty often she'll get emails from management that's just like, please stop throwing like, shit (laughs) shit over like don't throw your like trash like people literally will throw their trash bags over the balcony onto their own building and then there was one like the other day a a a construction worker got hit in the head with a sandwich (laughs) bro (laughs) that's some new york shit honestly that is bro construction work my so my sister lives in this building like big like floor to ceiling windows Mm -hmm. and they're like building like a sister building like next door and Bro, these people are mad sus. Like they had to put in blinds in my sister's thing because these people were being like mad sus, like taking pictures and shit. Like not that yeah. she was even like doing anything, just like just being creepy. Like yeah, like what? I'll throw a fucking sandwich at them. Like yes. <laughs> I was looking at apartments in her building today, actually. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, something about Greenpoint, I really like. It's like the only, like, really tolerable part of Brooklyn to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe it's just because Sean and Colleen live there, but like, I like. Um, yeah, I like Brooklyn, I think, uh, Greenpoint more than like Williamsburg. And I mean, Park Slope would be chill. And like, I, there are some like Brooklyn Heights is, is that's great. like later, in, but like, it's uh, exactly it's deep. Uh, the thing about Greenpoint that I don't like is just, it's just deep from like reasonable, yeah. like public transit. And you're dependent on like pretty black lines. But like, I actually, uh, we were walking the other day, like, if you get off the Bedford stop. I'm sure they're like bread, but and you just walk like beeline it to the water basically. There's Those like apartments these, like, are waterfront fire. building. Yeah, like but that area is so nice. Like I, think I would Albert, say that was like the nice I think place. Albert lives there in that area. But yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just like I thought it was like a nice an even nicer version of like it felt like a different Brooklyn or different Williamsburg, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. Um what was I gonna say? Shit. Living I think like area. if you got a squad though, I think like like yeah, you can live anywhere, bro. We yeah. can live in fucking like yeah, anywhere. Like, but I like, would love to have like a squad in Greenpoint, Fox, or Miami. Like if the squad came to Miami, that would be so fun. Yeah. What are you moving? The squad. Anyway. What are you moving? I know it'd be it would be elite, bro. Um, for so many reasons. Tell your girl move down here. We're gonna take over the city. Fuck. She uh. We'll see what happens. She yeah. like, yeah, good news from law school and stuff, but we'll yeah. see. Um, be fire. I kind of want a dog, yo. Yeah. I really, I feel like Miami would be elite. Like, yeah, not like blue is a lot, and like obviously no, like, like a, a dog, like a like, too much management, a better behaved, like dog. a manageable, a manageable dog that like doesn't shed like. Oh my like, god, crazy! You'd wake up and bro, you'd have like blue's hair and like, like I don't even know. But those like Anyone three can... four days when blue was with us was pretty happy like yeah. it was great except for that first day bro oh because he was in Wake your up. room right or he was like clawing your door. no he was outside he's cl- and he's just like whining and all these things and like like crying and i'm like oh my god and seven o'clock i was like you know what fuck it so i get up take this dog out i was like this dog wants to whine this early in the morning we're gonna send it so like miami heat just booked it and like went on a run for even like it was like five minutes mm-hmm. and he this was dog panting was gg yeah it was fine yeah. and then it was like mad easy to walk him. yeah i remember walking him was a mission because he would walk you like he would just go bro you pee everywhere everywhere later but yeah i think having a squad i think i mean i think any major city like new york miami would be fire and i think like honestly having a squad in like oklahoma like if we went if we all if we got like blubhouse crew plus like everyone else and went to like oklahoma mm-hmm. city we'd probably have a ball like it would yeah probably be mad fun. it'd be mad fun but i do think you should consider miami and i know i can convince yeah, Pedro, yeah, i, I mean, can I know, convince but... pedro to get here too and yeah. i think like i mean i'm already considering like yeah and then the yeah. the amount saved on taxes i know, I know. wild Crazy. i'm trying to think about downsides there's not as much like i mean probably nowhere in the world is new york like not as much like 
good food options, you know, like variety sure. of quality food. But there are some really good – there's a lot of, like, really good restaurants in Miami, but obviously it doesn't compare like to the, New York. Yeah. I feel like the, the culture is also more, like, homogeneous and, like, I don't know. Like, it's just, like – I don't know. New York has just such range and like you can mm-hmm. like go into so many pockets and obviously like Miami has so many pockets too. It's just yeah. obviously like a high bar, but like, yeah. I will say, I think in Miami, at least it's been my experience. It's like a little, it's clickier. Like if you don't have friends, yeah. I think it's harder to break into social circles. Either that or my social skills suck. Uh, no, but I mean, when we were there, we didn't know anyone really. Like, yeah. I mean, we knew some people, but like we, and I feel like we like made a ton of friends, like knew a ton of people. Like by the time, like, mm-hmm. I don't know, things were like, after like a month, I felt like we had a whole circle and like any day. We, we did, could, like, yeah. Do yeah. But like Henry, we already knew him. Um, and then like kind of people that he knew through his work kind of came into the circle as well. Um, but then they were down there and we would hang out with them yeah, yeah. and like friends and friends. I, don't, I just felt like, like I never felt like when we were in Miami, like mm-hmm. after at least like, the first two days like i always felt like oh we had people there the the thing about new york is if you can take new york and put it anywhere else it would just be better like if new york culture and and i mean it goes it it begs the question like how much of how much of new york's culture has to do with like the geography of it i mean a lot historically obviously like port you know on the east coast like was discovered actually i don't know historically what if what was discovered first but just had a lot of geographical appeal to it, like massive. Sure, and was like where Ellis Ellis Island, like it was mm-hmm. like one of the gateways to America for immigrants, yeah. and like I think that's why you have like right like New York City is just like blossoming with, with yeah. you know, diversity. But imagine if like you could take New York and put it where San Francisco is and get rid of the hills. I know. Like, oh I my know. god. Uh, or not even over. even not get rid of the hills, just make like San Francisco like the cultural sort of center that New York is. Like it'd be game over. Sure. Because like one of the biggest attractors of New York is the weather in the winter. Like it sucks, you know? Sure. I mean, there are places that are worse, like Boston. And the summer is ass too. Yeah, it's huge. I always say, I'm like we have we literally have like four good weeks a year. Two weeks. Nah, in like, spring, no, 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 I'd say like weeks. four good months. I think like Bro. April, May, or like May, June, maybe like mid April uh, to mid mid June, and then you get like September, October. Even then, there's like some really hot days, and so it's getting I don't know, and especially throw like, the, but yeah, New York by and large, like the weather is. I feel like California is the most stable, where you're just like, okay, this is like an enjoyable temperature most of the mm-hmm. time of the year. Like even if summer gets hot, not SF though. No, like. I feel like South Bay, like probably somewhere along the peninsula is probably like yeah. weather. Like yeah. Carmel. Marin. Yeah. Marin Me just cheat. Marin's like Marin's like where you go after like you just GG. Like you just, where you just you laugh just at the rest of the years. world. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, these fools are like dealing direction. with this kind of shit. Like yeah. do we have the name of that restaurant? It wouldn't be hard to find, but no, we I have it written down somewhere. That's we a good go story. Summer and that's a great story. Yeah, that's a great story. Yeah. Um but so like when Marco and I were in SF for Outside Lands, we like went uh, like a week Papa's early, a week early, and we did one night where we drove down to Santa Clara, where we went to school to visit our professors, uh, two professors, and have dinner with them. And afterwards, we drove um, back, driving back up to San Francisco. Like, decided why don't we just keep driving? And we ended up going up to Marin to Tiburon and yeah we were looking for a lighter and tiburon by the way is like off the charts wealthy it is like the like the wealthy people like the wealthy people's wealthy people area like, facts so, yeah. We were, yeah. Like, yeah we were looking for a lighter you were trying to smoke i was like yeah just chilling and one thing led to another we're like hopping around all these stores like late at night and it's kind of like yeah it's like the suburbs so we, we couldn't really find anything open we couldn't find like anything and then take it like we see this guy yeah. this guy was kind of like in the alley next to a restaurant and we asked him like hey do you have a lighter he's like no not on me but we can actually go inside this this restaurant and see if i could find something we're like nah no big deal he's like no 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 like I'm in charge of <laughs> opening this restaurant. Like I work for yeah. the restaurant group. Like I open all of their restaurants like come through. 
he so just he, play, he just he just pulled out that BDE, honestly. He yeah, honestly. Like, I got you. Yeah. And uh I wish I I could remember his name. I know we have it written down somewhere. Um Yeah. It was like but, Leon. No, yeah, whatever. It was like it was like Leon. Something Leon, like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. We have it written down. Lonnie, yeah. something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um I'm gonna check my thing while you can yeah, yeah. And so we took us in and we we entered this restaurant that's still like a few weeks weeks away from its grand opening and it's like a super high end restaurant and the decor inside is like you stepped into like what'd you say like like a an elite someone's private study like on a yacht a hundred yeah. years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the Titanic wealthy section. Yeah. And it's on the water, it's overlooking like you can see San Francisco, like skyline from it. See if you can find the the name of the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was like, yeah, it's like kind of like seafood. I guess it was ocean themed, so I'm guessing it was like a seafood restaurant, but maybe not. But yeah, so we start hanging out with this guy. He finds us a lighter. We go inside, and for like 30 minutes, he just goes deep on the like economics and strategy of launching a really high-end restaurant and we were yep. pretty blown away i wish i were, like the amount of a... money that they like it was insane like i think and they had like vc money and it was like it was like 15 million dollars i think they put into it or like something like that and it was gonna i don't know or they put like 30 million it was gonna make like 15 million a year um yeah i know a lot of like wealthy people will like be partners in a restaurant just because then they can always like guarantee a table and like mm -hmm. i don't know can like flex um and obviously, if it does well, they make money. Um, let me see if I can find it. But yeah, that was, I don't know. I can't, I can't find it. I'll yeah, we'll, we'll put it in the show notes. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that just got me thinking, like, I used to, I used to think, and I still kind of think this, that like, I remember, like, I, I reflect on childhood and not growing up with the internet and life having this sense of adventure and discovery, like, you know, feeling like there were secrets out there, feeling like there were like things to discover that were important um, just by like traveling, even locally. Like I remember when growing up in the city, like getting off at a new subway stop for the first time felt like a whole new world. And it was so exhilarating and exciting. And I think when I was in high school and college, I maybe assumed that that sense of awe or like the unknown was gone because of the internet and because of like Google maps or just, you know, you can Google something and like know where you're going to go and how to get around. Um, and that experience, meaning driving up to Tiburon and meeting that guy uh, randomly kind of, kind of refined my idea of that. I think that the internet in a way, at least for me, has definitely like impacted my sense of adventure negatively. Like I think that there's like less or like fewer things to do or like maybe more cynical about traveling. Yeah, there's more, it's more known. Like things mm -hmm. you, like the world is yeah. more, yeah, accessible. And like there's less to discover because people have probably discovered it already. Yeah. Um, but but it's like these niche situations within mm -hmm the world that are like very unique, right? Like a situation like that, yeah. like a night where you like, whatever, go on an adventure, like whatever. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And, and what I was going to say is that I think that our like brains, when we put, if we, so, so like a solution to that can be meaning like disillusionment, maybe like cynicism, maybe like loss of a sense of adventure, just go somewhere where you don't know how to get around that's like reasonably safe and just don't look at your phone. And I think yeah. like that sense of exploration and seeing things for the first time all over again, actually just wakes up right away. Like sure. not having, like I remember my friend came to visit New York, I don't know, a couple months ago when I was there and we went to Emily um, to get a burger, best burger in the city. And afterwards, oh, wait, 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 uh, no, not with Jordan. It was it was a a couple nights after you and I went um, and we split those sandwiches. 
Um, and yeah, I went with my buddy who's uh, who lives in Colombia right now, and he just came to visit New York for a couple of days. And afterwards, he's like, "Oh, I need to you know walk to 14th Street or something." And I just started walking, and he was like, "You know where to go. You don't have to look." I'm like, "Yeah, like I've lived here my whole life. I know how to sure. you know I know how to get anywhere in the city." Um, but that feeling of not knowing how to get somewhere, I think, is great. It feels really exciting to be exploring a city, not knowing how to move around sure. and not needing to know, like just discovering. You sure. know? Yeah. I actually was, I was talking with my, my boss today and he was, uh, we were talking about how like he used to run like marathons and whatever. And like, he was like, I love like when traveling, like, or going on a work trip, whatever, like just going on a long run in this new city. And he was like, it was so cool to like explore and figure out the city from like on mm -hmm. the ground. And I, I like, I was like, yeah, that's a fact Like. When I was in uh, Kyoto, I like just rented a bike and just for like five hours, like took it around, like locked it up, like went to get food and just took it around the whole city. And it mm -hmm. was like, like walking is great, obviously, but you just can't cover as much ground. And it was just like, mm -hmm. I don't know, such an awesome thing. And yeah, once again, like not using a phone or like loosely just like using Google Maps to be like, okay, like this is the shape of the city. Like yeah. on a similar thread, I, uh, I had a, a thought like fairly similar today. Um, I went to the museum of natural history, which is like people who don't know, just like this enormous museum in the city. That's like everything you can imagine related to like animals and life is like there. Um, and I'm walking around and I was like, none, no one in this museum would ever pull up their phone, go on Wikipedia and start reading about any of these animals, even though it's like, completely accessible and probably like 90% of what this museum is like mm -hmm. no one accesses it and like obviously it's cool to see the things in life but like it's amazing when given free choice what we actually do with our time versus like what we would expect to do with our time mm -hmm. like I don't know we spend time bullshitting on our phones we could learn about like yeah the most interesting things in the world like cutting edge or like history like I don't know yeah, dude, I, I was, uh, I, I, I'm going to try to tie a thread to this. I texted you the other day about Mr. Beast's appearance on Rogan and how yeah, like it's one of the best podcast episodes I've listened to in a really long time. And what I like about it is that this, this kid, he's 23, is like earning like $50 million a year, um, making like he's the number one content creator on YouTube. And when he talks about how he became successful, it's like, really simple not easy but very simple he said like yeah for 10 years i was just obsessed with youtube for every single day i was just creating videos editing videos sure. brainstorming how to create new videos and stuff like that and i don't know if i'll be able to articulate this well but basically the thing i'm thinking and it's like you hear this your whole life so there's nothing novel in what i'm about to say but like ray talks about this dan bilzerian talked about it in his book it's like it's, it's not always the most complicated thing to try to figure out how to get to where you want to be as long as it's in the realm of like possibility, both given sure. physically reality, your, your physical, like who you are physically, genetically, blah, right. blah. Um, but I think like Gary V talks about this too. If he says it this way, and I think it's a really cool thing, like if you're halfway decent at the thing you love, just go all in, put your head down for 10 years sure. and just do the shit out of it. Sure. And to tie this back to your point, like I feel like the dopam, like the way that social media is engineered to like manipulate and control dopamine and sort of build uh, like behavioral habits and addictions to use these things i think when we are so andrew huberman defines addiction as the he says it's the gradual narrowing of things that give you pleasure right so i think that when we have like very strong addictions or just habits behavioral that are linked to like these big dopamine hits like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, blah, sure. blah, blah. I think that 
other things feel less important. So sure. to your point about like learning something by reading on YouTube versus like going to the museum, the museum introduces like physical stimulus, you know, like sure, an sure. environment, architecture, blah, blah, blah. These things like capture our attention, our dopamine. And I think something about that makes us feel like, oh, this is more meaningful. This is more important. Sure. Than reading an article or whatever. Yeah. But it's interesting. Think, Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think like they, to, I'll let you finish and I'll, I'll talk about another point you, yeah. you mentioned. Like, so just to tie this up quickly, I think it's interesting or you, it's been useful for me to, to, to realize like to sort of decouple this sense of like what's meaningful from like what the actual content of something is. So like, I, I, I haven't developed this thought well enough maybe to articulate it like really well, but I think like for me and maybe it's different for other people, but like when we were like, when I first learned like Wittgenstein and was like, you and I were talking about Wittgenstein and stuff. It's like, what does that word mean for me? I think like things that are meaningful or things that capture the attention and like bring us to the present and like, produce some sort of emotional response. Sure. And I think like that day in Santa Cruz where we, you know, um, where we took acid and like had a very strong experience. Part of the thing of like why psychedelics are so, they feel meaningful is because they just bring you so into the present where the present, any, yeah. like your attention is so sensitive to small like shit, like sure. the way light reflects off a bush and you could look at that for 10 sure. hours, you know? Yeah, I wonder what in the brain exactly it's tickling, so to say. Like, is it like ultra focus, or is it just like like all senses become like? Does it lower the bar of focus, or does it bring everything above the level the bar of focus? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, probably a mix of the two. Honestly. Um, but yeah, I was gonna say about your your point about like social media. It makes us like you know. We get addicted to it less other things don't feel as meaningful like in this podcast this guy said he spent 10 years studying how addictive and viral his content was and like mm -hmm. how they like cut scenes change colors pick thumbnails like all these things like this man is literally studying like human psychology to understand what makes videos addictive and like as a result the platform like the platform rewards him for that um, mm -hmm. not directly but like indirectly like that they create the incentive structure for that mm -hmm. um but it's just mind blowing to think that people out there are studying how to make their content addictive and mm -hmm. like a platform's rewarding that like I yeah i think it's insane yeah. it and is it clearly works yeah. do you have a feeling in your life like if I told you, like, if, yeah, just to ask you, like, if you were going to put your head down and work on something for 10 years, like, what would it be? Maybe you don't know. That's okay, too. I think. I don't know. I, I So <clears throat> I saw this quote that was basically, like, when you start a company, you have to really realize that, like, all a company is, is a bunch of people agreeing to the same belief and like pursuit of the same future together. Okay. That's all like a company in reality should be right. Like, let's say it's something like shot, like Squarespace, like everyone agrees, like at that company, it's like important to the future that like websites are easy and whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, so I think, yeah, I think 10 years would be like start a company and find what's an idea that's like really interesting and I'm passionate about, which I don't know the answer to. And like, that would probably be an iterative process. And like, yeah, just build a dope like tribe around that, the people mm. who share the same beliefs. Cause I think I, it just sounds like a winning formula. Like if everyone's passionate about this and like everyone wants to work together towards this, like I, I and it's like a reasonable feel. I, I can't imagine. I feel like the, the cards are stacked in. Mm -hmm someone's favor um and i think it's probably just really rewarding like yeah so that would be my tenure build a tribe work on interesting problems um and build like i don't know a, a doper future i know it's like extremely abstract but um 
yeah i think that's the template what do you what do you, what do your what would be your tenure head Mu down? music yeah. for sure yeah. yeah um and i think that is like we've talked about this offline like with the new job that i'm starting less than two weeks at this point um it'll like afford me the ability to sort of get my life set up to and i also texted you that this is like an idea i might want to talk about like getting my life set up to a place where i can meet my like minimum like desire like desire for the way i want to live my life so like for example like now i'm going to get like an apartment in a place that i want to live i'm going to get like a nice ice plunge that i can use every single day get all my like music equipment and then just like sure. put my head down and you know i really love the 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 company that i'm going to start working at and sort of Nassim Taleb talks about his like barbell approach, like, you know, dividing my life between like my day job, which is being a software stable engineer, day job, yeah. stable, stable day job that like gives me a salary that I could, you know, leverage to, you know, like meet my living needs, but also like reinvest into my goals, you know, the, the money. So yeah. like, that's, and the I think like right when now. we were, yeah, I feel like when we were talking to, it's like, it, it, it life is now like coming from a place of like as corny as this is like abundance like okay mm -hmm. like there is a surplus and now i can like needs are taken care of and now i not even just wants but like things that you're passionate about that like mm -hmm. i don't know were tougher to pursue mm -hmm. before yeah i think that's Fine. a good question like 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 people should ask themselves um maybe when thinking about career like what is sort of you know, Tim talks about this, Tim Ferriss, like what is the lead domino that's going to get you closer to your long-term like goal um, sure. or like your just big goal, right? So like for me, it was like, you know, set up my environment to the place where I can like just execute without feeling like something's missing, you know? Sure. Um, and like, I want to, I, I could have done it a few years ago, but I probably wouldn't have been able to live in a neighborhood that I really loved you know, uh, sure. might have not had access to see my friends or family like when I wanted to, um, whatever it is. Yeah, it's a whole, it's, it's a, a very big step in a positive direction, for sure. Yeah. Fuck. Um, I had a tweet that I sent that I thought was interesting. And I don't think it's that, uh, novel but i think it's it's interesting um and this one i have a funny after story is it this uh, one you said yeah, at 3 30 a.m yesterday <laughs> yeah no, no no this one was at uh 2 30 in the morning okay um you said this to me tweet, on twitter it's, uh in the email oh i see and George it's, 10. it's yeah so this guy said when a fisherman goes fishing he thinks like a master fisherman but when a master fisherman goes fishing he thinks like the fish this tweet is not about fishing. Funny side note, this ended up trending in like the fishing section. That's not how I came across it, but it was mm -hmm. just funny. Um, but I do think it is. I feel like most people fall into the first bucket for most things, which is like totally acceptable. And I think this is a very like chef first cook type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but yeah, I think it's a much more first principle way of thinking like, okay, what is my audience or target? Like how, how are they approaching things? Not how would someone similar to me approach things? Keep going on that. How, how is there any idea like, or rather application of this idea that you've started to think about in your life? Not necessarily. I've just like, I don't know. I think like when it comes to music, like many people be like, oh, how did like successful musicians go about things or like, what are they looking to do? Whereas it's like, mm -hmm. what is someone looking for? I don't know. I, I think it depends, like depends what type of musician, but like, mm -hmm. what am I trying to tap into? Like with myself, with other people, not like what do musicians do? And I think same thing with like business things, like what is the competition doing? Not really, you know, and maybe it'll help, but like the real question is like, what, what problem am I looking to solve? And like, what is my customer like? thinking what do they need and i feel like not enough people approach things that way something that i haven't 
I mean, we talked about it maybe two years ago, um, but I want to bring this up to you again. Um, you have been like an engineer now for four or five years, right? Um, four. Four years. How? Because, okay, so when when I started engineering, I kind of had, I, a, I don't know if it was right or wrong, but like I've been a music, like I've been playing guitar since I was 12 years old, like had a kind of awareness of how my like relationship and skill grew over the years. And I'm like, obviously have not been an engineer. I've been an engineer for one year, right? Like professionally. So I'm curious, like what is the growth of the actual skill set looked like for you over the last four years, if you're able to sort of think of anything in that realm. I've, I was talking to someone about this recently. I think the biggest, 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 biggest thing is intuition. Like you'd kind of just get a sense of like a problem and stuff. And you quickly can kind of be like, okay, I think we should check in here or like, Oh, we're going to build this. Like this might be a pitfall here. Like, mm -hmm. and obviously like there's still times, right. You get caught off guard and it's mm -hmm. like just reducing the amount of times that happens. But I think it allows for, like a lot quicker iteration, like, you know, where to look when the problem comes up. Like if you have a bug in your code, you can fix the bug quicker so you can like ship more things. So I think that would, I would say that's probably the biggest thing um, besides like tactical, like, okay, like I know how to write clean air, dryer code, like whatever. But I think the biggest thing is like you learn how to problem solve and like interact with a larger system much more effectively. So I would say that is it? And I would say it also allows someone to take more accountability for their work. And I think that is like a key sign of someone who is more senior in, in my opinion. So have you worked with like any really like master engineers, like black belts? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like, obviously they're not a dime a dozen. They're like mm -hmm. rare, but I think, yeah, you definitely see where they just like, intuition is quick and then they like have some they, not every black belt is the same right mm -hmm. and different like, specialties yeah 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 but you can definitely tell pretty quickly like okay like this person like really knows their shit and like i don't know it's it's obvious very quickly there was a tweet for the day that was like you know a great engineer if they are making like impact in the first month you know, a good engineer, if they're making impact in the first yeah. three months, you know, a bad engineer, if they're saying they they more time. Like, time that was like, like Ryan yeah. Breslow, right? I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who that so, is, but it was a good tweet. He's controversial. He has to, his company actually does uh three day work weeks and like oh. pay well and everything in there. It's like one step checkout, billion dollar company, unicorn, like whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool company. The guy seems like he likes to stir the pot, but mm -hmm. I think for the better, for the most part, but I haven't spent enough time reading his stuff. I like pot stirs. Facts. Um, so what? Go ahead. What would you say for music? Like the engineering question. Um, I think it's a hard question to answer because I think there's more than one relationship to music. Like, I, I, I think there are like, there are all these types of sayings like, oh, there's two types of musicians. I told you one like the other day. Like, yeah, yeah. But there's another one. Like there are musicians of the, like, Stuart Copeland. He's a drummer. Um, he, a really okay. famous drummer. I, I believe the police. He said that um, there's two types of musicians, the uh, musicians of the eye and musicians of the ear, right? So I did not learn music um, through like the formal sort of classical approach of like learning how to read music and learning mm -hmm. theory. I did learn that stuff later, but I learned very much like through the ear, kind of like kinesthetically. And, you know, like um, I would say that like, what happens is kind of for me was like, the it's hard to say in words but like the barrier between like thinking and doing kind of dissolves like you don't 
feel like I'm playing an instrument. You just feel like I am being, and the instrument sure. is like a channel of that being. And and it's hard to sound like say I'm sure like I mean Josh Waitzkin in the Art of Learning kind of like you know we were talking about that book the other day like he expresses it I think better than I'm able to right now. But it's kind of like you become unconscious, not unconscious, it's flow like flow and flow, but also like knowing how to access that easier. Um, I could get there reliably. Like I know how to get there. And uh, I don't know. There's also like a, a trust. Like I haven't played too much guitar recently. Um, but I think you. De- I've developed like a sense of like when it's sometimes I need time away from music to, to I don't know. Too. Like, yeah to like reinvigorate sort of get a different perspective. But yeah, I think it comes to, yeah. Intuition is a good way to put it. Like you just get an intuition of how to do things. That's not filtered by like sort of logical thinking. Like it, it, it happens faster than like thinking. Sure, it just kind of a, like, yeah, it just appears. And then like, you just know how to do stuff. I love that quote. I just that that's just like in the modern age, we've praised the like, thinking mind and like subtracted the subconscious mind Mm -hmm. when in reality, like we should be praising the subconscious mind. I think it's, yeah, I think it's the same thing. Like whether it's music engineering, like, Mm -hmm. yeah, just like fine tuning your subconscious and yeah. So what's this other, this other email you sent for context, Marco and I have a blubhouse email address that when we come up with ideas, we uh, just email them to this address. And uh, you sent something at 3.29 a.m. Yeah. Um, This was, I think I was done like editing this video that I was working on. And yeah, I think, I think it just, the TLDR on it is just that like the best relationships, but that's work, love, everything comes from a place of like both people really wanting to be there Mm -hmm. and like or both parties really wanting to be there and they're not needing to be any like hard hand or anything to make it happen so like we see it with like and what i sent in the email was like with work from home or work remote like if you make the office enticing and you give your employees freedom to like work from home like if you have good employees and like they want to be there like i think i think you create a much better relationship And like, there's more trust and I think people are happier. And I think the same thing goes for like, like regular relationships, like Mm -hmm. just because there's like a label, whether it's like boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever, or like marriage, like the title means nothing. It's like, you should both really want to be there and Mm -hmm. you should have like ultra, like ultimate trust. And if things don't go wrong, like don't go well, then like. I don't know. I feel like you can't really hit the the pinnacle of like what relationship is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think it's interesting that like this work from home thing and like some, like didn't Google just say that they want employees to come back to the people office? Back. Like, yeah. Like that would, I just think people are going to push back. Like, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I do find myself like you're, I love being in an office. Sure. I, but I don't, I just, it's just hard to balance because on the one hand, it's like, I don't want to, I no longer, like, I don't think anyone, you probably feel the same way. Like, you don't want to have to live somewhere just because you work there. Yeah. But at the same time, it's, it's pretty fun when everyone who works together, like, is in the office at the same time. A hundred percent. Although I think but it's I, very unproductive. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think it can be productive, not productive, and from work from home, the same thing. Like, but I think it's the same thing, right? Like, and that, that's the point is like, you don't want it to be mandatory, but you want like, if people come into the office, it's so enjoyable that mm-hmm. like they want to come in or like want to be around. Like, that's what you should strive for. And I think it, it I don't know, it's just a win win for everyone. Like, like, you don't want to be told like, come into the office, but if like you go into the office and food's covered, there's a gym, like, you can hang out with cool people that's enticing and like you want to come in but if someone's like you have to come in like like all right but like i'm not about it like I yeah know. i wonder if google's gonna lose 
like do they have because they're google do they have the sort of status to be able to do that and people aren't going to leave because it's like where are you going to go from google kind of thing or is it that people are going to be like fuck this i don't care i'm going to go work at bing or some shit wherever <laughs> bing wang bing wang um, bing wang Entertainment. i don't know i think i think it's going to really like <clears throat> i think great you know, there's a saying like golden handcuffs like people yeah. it's like equity like skyrockets in value people mm-hmm. start making really good money like and it, like even if they're like not happy, they'll like stay. But like, mm-hmm. you hit a you hit a, a tipping point, right? Where it's like, okay, someone's accumulated enough like assets and wealth where they can just be like, okay, I'm not happy, peace, and like also have the experience where like you can go anywhere, and like people are like clawing for for good talent. So mm-hmm. I don't know. People will definitely stay and comply, but there'll be people that don't care and leave. And like, I don't know. I think both parties have to just be accept like the cost of that. Yeah. I feel like sometime in the in the near future we have to do like a podcast where we're in the same place, and we have to do it like mad late at night because those are when like the either your like filter of what's a good idea like gets shitty or the really good ideas come out. I think it's it's somewhere in between the two. Like because I've like had some ideas late at night that I wake up and read what I wrote down and I'm like, wow, this is ass. Like this is a horrible. Like there's nothing cool about this. But but sometimes you're like, yeah, it's some yeah some fire fact what did yeah, i say this one like 3 30 in the morning and i was like i was thinking remember that terry tf uh podcast he, he yeah, yeah interviewed terry cruz and he said like the same thing and it's like a fact yeah. but yeah. you sent you sent some um yeah this drummer thing you sent a few a few emails yeah i sent uh i just read a really good article um that was an interview with john Frusciante, uh guitar player of the chili peppers that was uh, released around the time that Stadium Arcadium was recorded, which was their double album in 2006. And I I just read it and I, re- I was just thinking about like how this is a master like in the craft that I aspire to be a master of one day. And I like, he said one thing, when we quote, when we were rehearsing for this album, I was probably listening to and practicing with my guitar for about five to seven hours a day. A lot of the music for this album came from me just playing and playing. Um, And end quote. And I think that ties into that, like Mr. Beast thing we were talking about earlier, like. Reps. It's about reps. It's about like, I think the subconscious mind will produce way better ideas if you give it like the training and sort of fuel it needs. And I I know like in senior year, when we were living in fishbowl, there were days where I was playing that much guitar. Like, I think you probably remember, like I would just go into the garage and just stay there for hours and hours and hours. We got to ask the neighbors. No. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) And, uh, that was like one of my most creative periods to date. Like, um, and I was just thinking about it. I was very inspired by reading that, but it might be a question like, how can you like make, you know, advancements towards your goals just by like putting in more reps, you know, like um, it's a good thing for people to think about it. I don't know if anyone else in the world falls into this trap, but I have definitely fa- fallen into this trap in the past where I think like I'm placing more value on like thinking about a problem and trying to come up with plans instead of like, so just doing it, yeah. like just doing it and being like, no, this, and like, but also like convincing myself that this actually is the best approach. Like I'm going to come up with bait way better music. If I play, try to write songs or just play for five hours a day, every day, instead of like coming up with a plan of like, how am I going to write music? You know? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just like, <clears throat> I think there's two effects, right? Like one is specific to the thing you're doing, right? So let's say playing guitar, but then two, it also opens this like rep of like creating and like the habit of creating. And I think that is like such a strong muscle to like keep healthy and strong. Like, yeah. And that's how I feel now. like just constantly like building things. It doesn't matter if it's videos, code, writing, like whatever. Like, I think it's just like, it's probably better if it's focused, right? If I was spending all this time coding or whatever like editing videos mm-hmm. like sure but like keeping that muscle like 
loose, flexible, and, and strong, I think, yeah, pays insane dividends. So talk to me about this video that you just finished. Yeah. Um, great context, taking the Casey Neistat class um, where he teaches storytelling and filmmaking. And yeah, so we had uh, our first video was like do and mine was on geese poop. So you had to go out and go out in the street and like pick something. And I happened to be up in Westchester. I was walking. One of the things was geese poop. And I was like, you know what? This sounds like kind of funny and could be interesting. So that was what I did. Um, and yeah, I had a blast making it like editing was like a ton of fun. Like I stayed up. Yeah, I stayed up. I spent probably five hours straight, like literally taking, I don't even think one break and just editing it because I was like having so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's dope. I uh, will definitely send it to you. No obligation to watch it. It's not. I'll watch it. I want to watch it. Good, really, at all. It's just been a lot of fun, and I like really enjoy the process of making videos. But it is very time consuming, and um, yeah, probably would like to outsource it, if, depending on what the content is. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Okay, first of all, would you want to publish the video on Blubhouse YouTube? Sure. I mean, I don't care. I like, guess it's. it's it's pretty it's like educational stupid and a little funny like mm -hmm. you'll see it's it's pretty like i don't know i'd say it's probably pretty close to my humor or how i talk maybe in certain mm -hmm. ways but like um yeah i i'm not afraid of sharing it and like part of the class is you share it and you get feedback from the community mm -hmm. so like my i'm assigned to like review people's videos they're assigned to review mine um yeah Maybe we yeah. have it as like an unlisted video and someone who listens sure. to the podcast, if they want to listen to it, text sure. one of us or leave, or like, there's no one who listens to it yet who doesn't have our number. So sure. <laughs> just sure. text one of us and ask for the video um, right. or like hit us up on Instagram or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm stoked to see it. I think like the podcast as it grows will definitely branch out some way to like we're going to be creating videos and I think a lot of what you're learning will probably be leveraged into like our own content and sort of creative endeavors. Sure. Yeah. So how many videos yeah, think... do you make in total in this course? Two. So the next one I think is longer and it's like a longer story. Um, I have to actually, after this, we'll do today's like assignment. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it's like every day basically. Um, but it's cool. It's been like learn really how to tell a story with like with an arc and like, I was trying to focus and I, I don't think I like, I think for parts I did really well, other parts I didn't do as well, but like focusing on like keeping attention and keeping like keeping the pace good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and I, I, I really, really like, I also view YouTube videos and movies completely differently now because like mm -hmm. I see how much like effort was put in and kind of like what they're trying to communicate and like, and that sounds kind of corny, but yeah, I don't know. It was, yeah. I would, I would recommend it. Four minutes okay cool yeah i want to yeah, watch sure. it yeah um would you do you have any interest in in goose shit film or making it i mean you're about to <laughs> um yeah i have tons of music video ideas that i i think like there was a period there was a period of life where i wanted to be a cin cinematographer um that doesn't surprise <laughs> i think like if I had 10 lifetimes and maybe in this life, you know, at some point, um, I doubt I'll ever be, you know, Chivo. I mean, even if I devoted my whole life to it, I probably wouldn't be as good as him, but, um, yeah, I have a lot of ideas that, you know, it's like you were talking about, like when you start doing something, it just like, um, like in the case of you started the blog and then after that you were like building shit and it, you, you told me like, yeah, it just becomes like effortless. Like you just start getting so many ideas and it actually becomes more of like a problem of like, which ideas do I actually execute on? Um, and in more creative, like parts, like moments of my life, like that sort of idea generation part of my brain, like goes on hyperdrive. So I have like a backlog of like all these different music video ideas that might suck, but are exciting to me. And yeah. uh, I have some movie ideas or like scenes in movies that I want to sort of figure out. And maybe there'll be just a music video. Maybe there'll be film. I don't really know. But I have, yeah, I got, I got ideas. 
Bye. They'll come out in the next couple like years. Blub Gang. Bye. Yeah, maybe we can collab on them. You know what? Big fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something I, I think I thought like always is like an untapped great form of media is like, I think I told you about this. Like I read uh, the Ruki Hurakami book, whatever Norwegian would. And I like mm-hmm. loved it up until like the last like 10% of the book. Like same with movies. Like it'd be such a cool platform to like either books or movies where like people create different like endings to stories. Like I think that'd be such a cool platform like it's called TikTok, fan like, fiction TikTok. dude yeah but like put a budget behind it you know what i'm saying oh, okay like like make it somewhat professional like mm-hmm. i don't know if someone a top 10 percent pod uh youtuber remade the end of like whatever like game of thrones or whatever something like that like i mean mr beast made like squid game so like mm-hmm. i haven't seen that video i gotta watch that video it's 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 interesting, but um, yeah. so you haven't seen Game of Thrones, right? Yeah, dude, you should watch it. Like, what is stopping you? I know. Just watch. I it. really want to watch. Everyone's been telling me about this. Like, I mean, it's, I know it's like a classic, famous show. The like, it's the one about the uh, um, uh, Baltimore police. Yeah, with the wire. With the wire. Yeah, yeah. everyone's like, you I haven't seen it, this. but I hear it's amazing. Everyone's like this top five, top five, if, like top three, if not top five, like uh, TV show. I think Game of Thrones would be number one if it wasn't for the last two seasons. But I still mm. think it's like a hundred percent worth watching. Just to, it's some of the highest Go highs I've ever ride. seen in television. Like, and like movies. I mean, it has some of the highest highs ever. Like. It's it's phenomenal. I'm thinking like I want to re- part of me wants to rewatch it at some point. Like it's it's phenomenal. Um, nice. Have you seen Sopranos and Breaking Bad? Those I've seen other... Breaking Bad. I've seen Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad is okay. elite. Would yeah. you put Breaking Bad? Yeah. Would you put top ten, top five, top ten? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Breaking Bad is definitely yeah, top ten. Yeah. Breaking Bad is a perfect show. Game of Thrones is not a perfect show because like how many people talk about how shitty the ending was and it was shitty. Um, Breaking Bad ended perfectly. Perfect shows, like okay, what are some perfect shows? Avatar: Last Airbender, completely perfect show. Like, we had this debate. Remember what was it? Dark or whatever? Like, like no, 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 dark is not. No, I don't. But like, my friends like loved it, and they were like, one, well, they thought the ending was good, but like, we both subscribed to like, if the end's not good, like the whole story is like fine, but it's just like mm-hmm. it, it can't hit the high highs. Like, Look, whereas other people like they don't really care. Like, the thing with dark, the first season was phenomenal. The second season made you want to watch the third season. The second season is really good. But when it came to the end of the second season and third season, it just felt like they were making it up as it, like they were not planning ahead of time. They were just like, oh, let's do this and see how we can land it. And it seemed like they were writing it. Like it wasn't well planned out, well thought out. And that's how I feel. I also feel like, but also like with TV shows, I actually don't know what the like industry standard is. Like how, like most shows only live for what? Like a pre, like uh a test run, let mm-hmm. alone like a season. So like, mm-hmm. do you plan a, like, how do you plan a story that you don't know if it's going to, will have even the life to continue or not? Like mm-hmm. I'm sure certain shows, right? Like if it was like, I don't know, some famous director or whatever. But... Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but dark was just like, I, I have, yeah. a, I have a friend here in Miami too. My friend, Joel, who like, he loves the show. And I'm like, you're crazy. Like this show sucks. Um, it didn't suck until the third season and the, the final season. It was just ass like it was so bad i i will i i'll die on that sword i thought it was trash um right. okay but perfect shows breaking bad is definitely a perfect show avatar last and airbender perfect sh- like perfect show um death note said anime i heard that's elite yeah. oh it's it is perfect um it's so engaging. what's the titan one i've heard something titan. attack on titans attack on titan. so one it's not done yet and two so I watch it, it's still going, and it kind of, it feels confused right now, but I think they're going to land it really well, but it is an extremely good show. Like, yeah, if they land like, it well, it'll be a perfect show. Facts. I'm trying to think. I've heard, I've heard, uh, 
uh the police show the wire it's, i'm blanking on the name the wire i heard is perfect yeah. sopranos most people would say is like a perfect show yeah i have have you seen, seen entourage yeah i only seen like a, a handful that's probably the show i've watched the most episodes of and i don't mm. know whatever it's like 10 but that that show is just like i feel like it's impossible to not like that show as a guy yeah even i feel like i don't know any like i don't know i feel like there's no girl i know that doesn't like the show. people say it's like the sex of the city of men um interesting when i was a teenager i really loved californication the show um and if you take the first four seasons of that show it's a perfect show i think the final three seasons did work like very different in quality but i still love it about californication is this show is it related to the red hot chili peppers no not at all um it's about this guy who's like a novelist from new york who moves to LA because one of his books is this is all like before the show starts. Um, but one of his books like was made into a movie and the movie sucked. Um, and it's like a, it's really like a love story, like from a man's perspective, it's like an idealized man, male love story, but the guy's like a womanizer and he like the beginning of the show, like he loses the woman that was like his woman because of mistakes he made and it's kind of like them dancing i'm not selling it very well because it's very much like a comedy um it's like a dramedy i guess but it hits some like crazy highs and i think it speaks to like the male psyche very deeply i would watch a couple episodes it's i've never heard of it before i think if you watched it it'll explain a lot of my personality (laughs) because you because that's a cue to not watch it (laughs) facts what 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 uh was it HBO or Showtime? Showtime. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Fox. It was it's a great show. I love it. Um Fox. but I wouldn't call it a perfect show though, but it was really good. Fox. Do you wanna um we're already over an hour, so maybe we can call it soon, but yeah. do you wanna um do some-, some uh a few uh what are some things that only New Yorkers know? Yeah. Did we, uh, yeah, did we talk about part of this or is this offline? Offline. We didn't say it on the podcast. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So my sister's boyfriend thought of this idea and I thought it, yeah, it was like a one and we talked about it and we're like, yeah, that's an elite idea. And it's just like ideas that only, or things that only New Yorkers would know. Um, and the one that he gave that was like 10 out of 10 was like any good place, any good restaurant, any good ethnic restaurant in the, in Manhattan. There's a better one in Queens, which Facts. is just like a fact. Yeah. Um, the other one was like, if it's a busy, if it's rush hour and there's an empty subway car, don't get in the empty subway car. Facts. That's a good one. Down. My mom, my mom yeah. texted me one today, like kind of coincidentally. She, I never didn't tell her about the idea, but she was like, ha, "Real New Yorkers know what car." Of what subway car to get in so that when it gets off at their stop they're right next to like the stairs or escalator and they'd have to yeah, walk yeah. minimally that's like a low-hanging fruit one one thing that i i have verified this time and time again when you're walking late at night and you see like a fruit stand um outside like on the street you might think that it's unattended there you will never find an unattended fruit stand in new york city Facts. ever that's like that's a fact Long. I know, you'll, you'll start looking around someone like will like around a corner like from cement, someone from the cement will come out and just or pick, like like five dollars like yeah chilling in the tree whatever another one is like don't ever buy halal near like like a tourist destination yeah ever it'll be like nine dollars like if at in nice. today's day and age if you're paying over seven Honestly, I'd say six, but I guess it's up to seven now. Seven Seven for like, but you get combo, right? Yeah. No, I get combo is one dollar more. So combo seven or eight. Sometimes it's the same, but usually it's a dollar more. Yeah. So combo max you can pay for combo is eight. Like, yeah, more you're getting. Yeah. But even eight is kind of like you can get it. You can find seven. Um. But lamb over rice. I saw. Five, I saw. Yo, I saw. I think I saw like a five or a six, five dollar lamb over rice idea. I was like, yo, they're on some crazy shit. That's that's Queens shit. You can still yeah. get that in Queens. Um, nice. What's another something only New Yorkers know. know? There's 
There's so many. I mean, there's one way. I feel like one thing that's like always obvious, which isn't like, I guess it's probably only New York related, but like if someone's not jaywalking, they're probably not from New York. Facts. Oh, something that drives me fucking crazy is when tourists come to the city and they walk like, you can't walk parallel on the sidewalk, like horizontally more than two deep. Like then you got to yeah. stagger the group to be like, like you can't have like five people walking next to each other, taking up the whole fucking sidewalk. Like that's, I don't know. I think New Yorkers have an intuition about like how to navigate like walking, like even when it's really crowded in a way that's like second nature that like obviously non New Yorkers don't have, or like people who didn't grow up in big cities, I guess. But like, honestly, what's like, yeah. a, you know, um, trying to think other, I mean, this is like super yeah. low hanging fruit, but like no one in New York ever like goes to Midtown unless they like work there. Yeah, Midtown is trash. Yeah. So there's good restaurants. There's some good restaurants though, but nothing so really like, do there. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to like we'll just sprinkle about them in at the yeah if we if we think of them. Anyone um, listen to this podcast? Feel free to text us. Yeah. Or DM us on Instagram at Blubhouse. Um, any ideas? We'll give you a shout out. Uh, yeah, we'll give you a shout out. We'll feature you on the pod. Maybe we'll have a custom nice. guest Instagram post. Who knows? Sure. Anyway, we're at like uh, an hour and six, maybe for a couple minutes. Have you read anything recently that you um, have really enjoyed? <clears throat> Let's see. I The book I'm reading now is like kind of whack. Um or like, I don't know, I just started and I'm not really that passionate about it. Mm-hmm. What I just finished was Blitzscaling, which is like a business book by uh, Reed Hastings, who is part of like the like LinkedIn Mafia mm-hmm. and started, uh, I mean, PayPal Mafia and started LinkedIn. Um, it was just a really interesting way of thinking about how, what companies need to do to succeed today. So like mm-hmm. the whole concept is that like, if you find like product market fit, you kind of have to just like pour gas in the fire and just grow and like become as big as possible, as quick as possible. And if you don't, someone else is going to do it and they're going to take your lunch basically. Mm-hmm. But it's like risky because like you can fail easily. It's a lot of big decisions that to be made quickly. So I don't know. That was interesting and made me, I don't know, think about things a little bit differently, but mm-hmm. nothing that notable. Yeah. I don't know. What about you? Uh, my girlfriend and I have been really into the show called Counterpart. I think I talked about it in this last episode, but we just finished the last episode maybe two hours ago. And I think it's it's one of the better shows I've seen in a really, really long time. Um, it's like mm-hmm. like it's like a basically like a spy show um, with like a lot of mystery involved in it too. And I think it paces really well and it lands the it lands the plane very, very well. So I recommend people watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. Starring J.K. Simmons, um, you're about you're about the Amazon Prime video. I mean, sure. I think they have like no, I don't. What other shows have I watched from Amazon Prime? I don't know, but don't they, know. Have, they have some I feel good like stuff. You told me another one too. I think they have a good movie movie uh, library. Um, Interesting, dude. Bezos, it's about it. It's a fact. It's Did you end up watching the Lex uh, the Zuck interview? Nah, not yet. I've been kind of like in a weird limbo with you know, all the new job stuff. But I think once it's closer to the start date, I'll like devote and allocate more time to like podcasts and books and stuff. Facts. But you liked it? Facts. It's always interesting to hear like his take on things and where he's coming from. I don't think there was anything like shocking. I just think it's like this man clearly like thinks extremely deeply about social networks and technology and like, I don't know, like, Sure, you can say it's quick, like it's lucky that he stumbled upon the time and making Facebook Facebook. But like, I think over time he's made like some big bets and big calls that like have paid off well. And I, I don't think it's a coincidence that like he's still like a founder CEO and like doing so well. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I guess I'll have to check it out. I think uh, we should call it. Um, yeah, let's do it. It's mad late. Yeah, 11, it's 11. late. Eleven, eleven. Make a wish. eleven, eleven. Our like hearts. If you're uh, a toxic guy, you gotta you gotta text text your girl. Facts you up. See that tweet, yeah. <laughs> um, Those tweets are hilarious. Yeah, let's just say our hearts go out to all the people suffering currently still in Ukraine. Don't know Facts. 
enough to make any predictions or comment on anything further, but hopefully um, we find an off ramp very, very soon. Bye. All right. Well, pleasure as always. Facts. And uh, much love to you and the and everyone listening. The Blub Gang. Peace out. Blub Be gang. good. See you next Peace. week.